So in my last video, I talked about how we can create a turntable animation like this. And I've explained how to do this with uh, an object in the center, that is her. And she is essentially rotating around the Y axis. And that is what we show. The lights and the camera are stationary at this point and only the person in the middle or the group in the middle rotates. But there's another way of doing that. And the effect is almost the same. So let me show you that. This is the same person with a different hairstyle. And she's rendered in a slightly different way. And we'll see this in a side-by-side -side comparison. So in this case, I'm literally rotating the camera around a central object and I'm leaving everything else stationary. So here are these two things side-by-side. -side. They're a little out of sync because the person on the right, I forgot to add the perfect keep frame interpolation to linear. But so the result is almost the same and it's totally personal preference of how you want to set this up. I prefer to have the character rotate around its own axis, but it's personal preference. So I thought I'm going to show you how you can rotate the camera around while leaving the object in the middle stationary. So there we go. Let's do this. I'm just going to show you how to do it from scratch. So let's go and bring in a character and uh, nothing fancy, just a gray Genesis 8 figure, maybe a male figure. And the first thing I want to do is have a think about how long my animation needs to be. If I use 30 frames, that's going to be that's that's going to be too short. If you want to show your character from all sides, you probably want to have something like three to four seconds. So if we were to think in 30 frames a second, the first thing I'll do is I'll switch this down here, the total frames to 121. That's 120 frames plus one frame, which is the zeroth frame. Um, thank you so much. Um, Two people have actually explained this to me in a comment on YouTube. I appreciate that. So very, very nice. So this gives us an essential four second animation here. And I'm going to leave my figure stationary and just move the camera around. So for that, I need to have a camera to begin with. So I'll go and create one new camera up here, new camera, and I will leave this checked here, copy active view, perspective view. And I'll, I'll just do that so that the camera now looks exactly the same as the perspective view. So as a result, if I were to move the perspective view and then go back and look through my camera, I can still see this. I can also go and switch on my aspect frame here. So imagine this is my perfect framing. It actually isn't really. I'm gonna, I'm gonna frame this guy up like this. So this is my camera. And instead of the person in the middle, I'm gonna rotate the camera around the guy. And that's a fairly simple concept. If we look at the perspective view again, oh my God, let's switch that aspect frame off. I can see my man and I can see the camera, but it looks like it's very difficult for me to tell the camera to go around in a circle. I mean, how am I gonna describe the circle to the, to the animation engine? super easy with a helper object. I will go and create myself one from here. So we'll say create new null and a null object in Dash Studio is a very fascinating thing. You can use it for so many things. If you start thinking outside the box, it's something I'm just going to go and put it into the middle. So apply the scene defaults. It'll be applied exactly in the middle underneath my guy here and it is empty. Blender calls it an empty, Dash Studio calls it a null. All it is, is really a node in a scene hierarchy. And as such, it can be animated. So what I need to do now is I need to make sure that null is in the same position as my character. And then I'm gonna go and grab my camera and left click and drag the camera under the null. So as a result, if I go and select my null and move it, the camera will also be moved. Watch this. So no matter where I move my null, the camera moves with it. And the cool thing about this is now that I can go and animate my null by just rotating my null around the Y axis. And if I were to do that, the camera goes and describes that perfect circle around my guy. So this is how we can animate the camera and leave objects in the center stationary. So I find this a little bit more complex to deal with. It is actually much easier to just rotate whatever's in the middle, be that one character, several characters, or a group of things. 
leave the light stationary. Lights, you're gonna also have to parent to the null so that they care, that they move as well, unless you want the light to come from the same position, which means if you had a strong rim light or whatever, and the camera goes and goes to this place, then you'll see that the light is essentially coming from the same direction while you're moving the camera. So that doesn't always look great, but you know, one of those things. Um, personal preference. So with the null selected now, I'll go to the first keyframe here and hit the plus icon on the parameters tab on rotation. It depends on where you want to move the camera. Uh, at the end of the whole animation, I'm going to go and set this to just one shot of a full rotation. So if you were to set this to, so 360 is the same as the current position. So if we set this to 359, just arbitrarily, then uh, set a keyframe here on the null. Let's see what happens. Oh, nothing happens. Oh, that's uncool. <laughs> Why not? Maybe it's because I need to put my uh, rotation actually into the into the menu here, into the animation menu. And just once again, set zero as the first keyframe. Didn't I just set a keyframe there on the null? Crazy stuff. Sometimes this happens. There we go. Now it works. So keyframe at the start and the end, and now my camera rotates around my guy, which is awesome. So when we go and look through the camera and press play, we'll see that this happens, which is exactly the kind of turntable animation you want. You might, it depends on which direction you want to go to. If you want to go the other way, if you want the character to turn the other way, then instead of the 300 um, at the very end here, with the null selected. Instead of 359, you just type in minus 359. And then as a result, the rotation happens the other way. And now the character rotates this way, which is groovy. So anything you want to uh, you want to remain stationary in this you have to parent to the null and everything that you want to rotate around needs to be not parented to the null. That is kind of how this works. There we go. That is... Oh yeah, and then of course one other thing, the one that I did forget in my demo in order for this to uh, not speed up and slow down. You have to change the keyframe interpolation of this. And you can't do this with the triangles. You have to go and do this with the actual uh, keyframes. So if you open that up, make sure the rotational property is selected down here as R. You can select other things, but R needs to be selected so that it shows up down here, Y rotate. This keyframe, that is what, what does it all. This one and its matching pair. So control and select the other one as well. That is the one, that's this one here. <laughs> and uh, with both of them selected, right click on it and choose set keyframe interpolation to linear. And when we do that now, the guy will spin without slowing down or speeding up. So it's just a continuous rotation in this case. There we go. That is how you rotate a camera or orbit a camera around a central object. In this case, a gray guy.